Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. The march that would never end has finally come to an end. Oh my gosh, guys. If you had told me at the end of February everything that would have happened in March, like I don't I mean, I guess I would have believed you. Um, after some questions about how you know such things and if you are from the future. But um, wow, it has just been a lot this month. You can go refer to my Where I've Been video to talk about some of the like, like the full extent of the craziness. Oh, fun fact, On um, in addition, since then, um, I knew that I was mildly allergic to cats, but I realized that living with two cats 24-7 um, has been it so that I'm actually like genuinely pretty allergic to my cats. I have like some light rashes. So that's just like my nice little thing to end off on. Um, I'm gonna, I'm moving some things around. I'm gonna slowly phase them out of my bedroom and I've got some air filters going. I've got some like home remedies. Hopefully we can make this work. And once we are no longer in the pandemic quarantine, I will not be around them 24 seven. So it shouldn't be as exacerbated, but Anyway, I'm gonna be here full time for at least another month. I just found out from my work that we are on, on remote work until at least the end of April. Um, I'm very thankful to have a job. I'm very thankful that that is pretty secure as of right now. So um, yeah, we'll just sort of you know take it one day at a time here uh, in the Books Like Woe household. But anyway, March has been pretty much a cluster. I therefore, I read a lot at the beginning of the month and then virtually nothing until the end of the month. So I ended up reading 13 books in March, which again, considering everything going on, not so bad, but I definitely did not meet all of the goals I was hoping I was going to meet. So we can talk a little bit about that, but honestly, totally fine where I ended up. I still did make some good progress. So let's just go ahead and jump on into the stats and then we can talk about my disappointments, my surprises and my hits for the month. In terms of stats for the month, I read a total of 4,092 pages with an average book length of 322 pages, which is significantly less than what I normally read. Like I said, I read 13 books for the month, 11 of which came off my TBR, two of which came from like the library or a subscription description service. Uh, the average age of book that I read was 10 years and the average length of time that a book had been on my TBR was three months. So actually both of those are, are exactly where I like to hit. I uh, spent on average $3.67 for books. I only paid for five of them, which was 39%. So a lot of it was like library or subscription service or publisher or whatever. Uh, in terms of genre, pretty typical mix for me, just like less of it than normal. Um, and not as much nonfiction as I would normally read, I think it's a little light there, but uh, my biggest category was historical romance with three, that's unusual. Uh, but then, you know, a couple of mysteries, a couple of contemporary romances, a couple of fantasies, a couple of sci-fi, one nonfiction. Yeah, like pretty, like I said, a typical mix, just like not as many as I would normally be reading. Uh, and then rating wise, actually a very high rating month. Um, I was really enjoying what I was reading up until, you know, shit hit the fan and I, I was like down for the count a little bit. Um, but my average rating was actually 3.46, which is very high for me. And uh, I only, I had one DNF, which we will talk about, uh, but everything else I gave a three star or higher to, and I had one 4.5 star for the month, actually one that was a borderline for 4.5 star, but I ended up going with four. So yeah, in terms of quality of the reading, very good. I just didn't do as much of it as normal, but still like 13 books is like plenty for a month. Um, so those are my overall stats. And then in terms of the challenges I addressed, Oy, oh, actually, let's pull that spreadsheet back up and I can tell you about that. So in terms of challenges I addressed, I did read one Agatha Christie this month. Um, I'm trying to finish her up this year, so I read one of those. I had two picks for We Need Diverse Romance. Um, one was Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye, which I really enjoyed. I think I've got that as our May pick for the We Need R Diverse Romance book club that I'm running. Um, actually really, really enjoyed that. Would recommend, it was very cute. The romance I don't think was like wholly successful, but it was still just so cute I didn't even care. I read One Word Kill by Mark Lawrence, which was a part of my Operation Sci-Fi, so I did that. And then I did get to The Last Wish, Ah, let's see here. The Last Wish, I finished that up this month, and The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Um, both of those were for a fantasy thing that I've been doing, which actually I, I just finished filming the outro, so you should be seeing that one pretty soon. So I think those were all the challenges I did hit. What I did not manage to do was I did not actually like 
I'm filming this on the 31st. I didn't finish uh, The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics. I'm actually planning on finishing this up tonight. Um, this was my We Need diverse, diverse Romance pick for the month. So I'm hoping I can finish that one up tonight, but I didn't finish. And then I made a good chunk of progress on, but did not finish The Count of Monte Cristo. Life happened this month. It just, it didn't end up happening. And I'm very disappointed because I was really enjoying what I had read of The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. And I appreciate everybody who did participate in the read along in the discord. It seemed like people enjoyed having kind of a motivation to get to that book. Uh, it was a, a crowd pleaser. So that's good at least. But yeah, I was bummed I didn't quite finish that. But that was just the kind of month March was. So um, yeah, I think those are all of my challenges and stats. So let's get into, I think we'll start with disappointments since there's only a couple of those. Okay, so disappointment wise, uh, I only had two that I wanted to call out uh, somewhat by virtue of the fact that my reading volume was lower. But like I said, also in general, really good reading month. So first, I will say, well, the most disappointing because it was painful was The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. I DNF this. Um, I gave it my very best shot. Uh, here's the deal with this. I have much fonder feelings towards this now that I have attempted a reread, because I did read this, I wanna say I was like 18 or 19 the first time I read this. I had just finished Lord of the Rings and therefore was very much like, this is just Lord of the Rings ripoff, whatever. I actually really don't feel nearly as much that way now that I like gave this another try. Like it is, there's definitely some parallels, but like it's got its own vibe, it's got its own thing. The thing about this book, and what I'm actually amazed that I even made it through one round of, is the writing. I cannot with this writing. I don't think it will be a deal breaker for everyone, but for me, it's like these really, these paragraphs of simple declarative sentences that are packed with adjectives, and it's just not my truth, it's not my gig, it's not my reality. And so was I going to read like 700 pages, almost 700 pages worth of that, I just wasn't. I got to, I think, I think I read like maybe 130-ish pages of this and I was just like, I cannot do this anymore. So um, I can see like character-wise, plot-wise, I see what the appeal here is and I could see myself um, enjoying the adaptation of this actually. So um, I probably will check for that, but the book itself, no ma'am. No ma'am, not for me. So this was definitely a disappointment, uh, my biggest one, because I DNF'd it. Then in terms of another disappointment, the only other one I had, I did want to mention that um, Destination Unknown by Agatha Christie was definitely disappointing because it's not like the worst Agatha Christie I've read by far. Uh, you know, I still enjoyed myself at various points in it. Um, it's, it's readable, it's Agatha Christie, it still has her like, it's in the 50s, still pretty strong Christie time has her very like bubbly, sparkly prose, but it's just, it's one of her thrillers. It's a later thriller and there's like logical leaps in it that are not great. Like there's not as much hand wavy. Um, basically it's like close enough in time that I have an opinion on how realistic it is. Like when she's doing these thrillery things in the twenties, I'm just like, okay, fun. Like we're having like jolly japes in the twenties. Like, yeah, let's get in this like crazy old car and go to like a speakeasy. That's fine. That's like, I can kind of go with it, but the later her thrillers get, like the, or her spy, spy thrillery kind of books get, it's harder for me to do that. And so this one is set in the 50s. It's like got like Cold Air, uh, Cold War, like commie spy stuff happening. And that all was just fine. And then it also has this really intense beginning that involves uh, intent to self-harm fatally. And I just felt like that whole thing was handled really glibly in a way that made me really uncomfortable and I did not enjoy. So basically like the TLDR here is just that it wasn't for like, it just wasn't my favorite. Like it was a perfectly fine way to spend some time because it's Ag Agatha Christie and Agatha Christie is just like the tits. But it just wasn't one of her better ones, I don't think. Um, and that kind of bummed me out because I felt like I'd heard people talking about this being a good one from her. I just, it didn't quite work for me. So I gave it three stars. It wasn't like the worst thing I've ever read or anything, but definitely a weaker Christie in my opinion. So that was my second disappointment, which, but really pretty much everything else I read, I liked pretty well. So let's go ahead and move into surprises. Okay, surprise number one is to Have Into Hoax by Martha Waters. Yeah, that's that sounds right. And this was a historical romance that, okay, so I gave this four stars. I'm gonna tell you right now, I think a lot of people are not gonna like the plot in this. And I also didn't really love the plot in this. It's high concept. It's sort of like a, it's a rom-com in the Regency between an already married couple who have had a falling out and are like finding their way back to each other. 
Basically, there's a misunderstanding in the beginning and the wife thinks that the husband was killed when she finds out he wasn't. They kind of get into like this, like almost like prank war with each other. And it reads, the thing is, it reads very YA almost, but with sexy times, like YA or like new adult. And so I think that piece is not going to be any, a lot of people's favorite. It wasn't my favorite, but I really love the characters and the authorial voice was so good. This is the closest tone match I found in a very long time to Tessa Dare. I want to read more to get that confirmed, but the same way that I felt like Evie Dunmore last year reminds me a lot of Courtney Milan, Martha Waters this year is reminding me a lot of Tessa Dare. So I will 100% read more from this author. I The writing was absolutely my favorite part. The banter is really good. And I actually did really like the themes. Like a lot of it is about like finding your own voice apart from your parents. It just, it, it's a younger theme and it's an adult romance. So like that's the piece I think that doesn't, like the plot and everything doesn't totally come together. But for a debut novel, I thought it was very strong and it's just like, it's fun. I think that if you're looking for a fun historical romance, like a Regency rom-com kind of thing, this is not gonna let you down. And like I said, I definitely think this is an author to watch in terms of just like the quality of the writing. So that was my first surprise. My second surprise was um, Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. So I also gave this four stars. I really liked this. So surprise, like the reason I put this in surprise category is that I think you should 100% do some research and find out the eight books that are referenced in this plot. Because if you don't know the setup for this, it's like uh, a serial murderer is serially murdering based on the plots of these eight classic mystery novels. And it appears that they are using this list from a blog of eight perfect murders in, in mystery novels to decide which one, like which books to use as the template. So the person who wrote that blog was a, a is a mystery bookshop owner. And so he kind of like gets brought into the investigation. So I think what you need to know is that all eight of those books get spoiled. So you should go read, does it even say on the back cover? It tells you some of them, but like find a list that tells you all, all of them. Should I just do it? Maybe I'll just do it right here, right now. Give me a second. I'll, I'll tell you what they are. Okay. So the eight books are The Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne, Malice of Forethought by Anthony Berkeley Cox, The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie, Double Indemnity by James M. Kane, Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith, The Drowner by John D. McDonald, Death Trap by Ira Levin, and The Secret History by Donna Tartt. So all eight of those books' plots are spoiled in this. In addition, I also want to warn you that two other Agatha Christie novels are spoiled in this, and that was what surprised me because I feel like there's no way for them to tell people, and they're two of her very best books. So, and then there were none has a key part of its plot spoiled, and The Merger of Roger Ackroyd has a key part of its plot spoiled. So like, just know that. That I felt like was... Like, I, I, it's hard because I actually really did enjoy this. I had a really fun time with this. It's not like the best murder mystery thrillery kind of thing I've read, but like, it's really fun. I, it's really strong. It's really fun. I definitely recommend it. But I just want to make sure people know how much spoilage there is in this for other works. So I just thought that was kind of tough. But I, I really like this. There's a very meta quality to this. And this is a book where I guessed in the first like 50 pages a lot of what was going to happen. But the author is like very self-aware of that and like is incorporating that into the way that the book unfolds. So like I'm not like it didn't feel predictable. It felt like very much like the author was in control of that. So I really enjoyed this. Would recommend just with a heavy like you're going to get all the spoilers, so just know that going into it. And then four hits I wanted to highlight. So first of all, I just wanted to put Temp by Noelle Adams in my hit list because God bless Noelle Adams for helping me like get out of a reading slump after my surgery and everything. Like this is exactly the light contemporary romance I needed to just like ease back into reading. I appreciate it. I need a couple more books like this, I think, to kind of fully get back into my reading mojo. But it just is exactly what I like. It's set on a small college campus. It's a workplace romance between a temp and her temporary boss. And he's all grouchy and 
she's gonna like melt his little heart. It's just, it's super cute and exactly what I wanted. So God bless Noelle Adams for always like delivering me exactly what I need in these times. So that was a hit. Um, I also really enjoyed, I, I got the audio uh, as a pre-order of Legendary Children by Tom Fitzgerald and another gentleman who's Lorenzo something maybe? I can't remember the other guy's name, but this was really interesting. It's basically a history of drag, kind of through the lens of using RuPaul's Drag Race as sort of like the touch point for each area of discussion, but it really is historical nonfiction. It's like a, it's historical nonfiction of like queer culture and specifically, specifically drag, but I think it kind of expands from there. Um, I really appreciated how it kind of t explains where certain drag traditions come from and kind of like the different social and cultural forces that formed drag as we know it today. Uh, it's just, is a super interesting, very informative book. I think the audio works really well. The, the two authors are the narrators. The only thing that I think would have made it like even better is if they had more tightly tied some of the points they were making to the show of RuPaul's Drag Race because I think that was sort of the pitch of the book and at times I wish that it had done that a little more focusly. Like there's this great section about lip syncing that uses a specific performance from Latrice Royale in season four um, to make the point that they're trying to make. And I thought that if there had been more moments like that in the book, it would have really like gone up a notch in my opinion. Um, but it was like just a super interesting, informative history of queer culture that I would definitely recommend. Super, super fun. And then my two favorite books this month. So this one, I was between a four and a four and a half and I landed on a four. Uh, and that is The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski, which is the first book in the Witcher series. I really, really like this. So I started this back in February and finally, just like with life, <laughs> it didn't quite get finished. I also wonder if I would have liked this even better if I'd been able to really like push through it more focusedly, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. I think there, the fairy tale kind of quality to this works for me. That's something I very much enjoy in books. Angela Carter's Bloody Chamber is one of my all time favorite books. So like it had some of that vibe to it, which I appreciated. It had different magical creatures than I'm used to seeing in fantasy worlds. So I really enjoyed that. And I know, so this was written in the 90s and I was expecting to deal with some like 90s bullshit basically as a result of that. But, and maybe this is just because Angela Carter has trained me to look for this in this kind of book. I read this as very feminist in a lot of ways. Like I felt like there was a lot of commentary about women who were monsters, but not actually. Like, I don't know. I, I'm i kind of, maybe I'm crazy because I know I've seen some people criticizing this for being misogynistic. And like, I guess I could see that if you have like a surface level reading, but I just felt like that was so clearly not what the author was trying to do. But maybe I'm giving him too much credit. I don't know. I thought this was actually like super, a very interesting commentary at a lot of places on class and gender. So I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but I really enjoyed this and I thought that the stories were very interesting. Um, I don't have a lot of like thrust to continue in the series at this point, just because of where it kind of, like the way it kind of wraps up. So I think I'm actually gonna end up watching the Netflix series to kind of get me through the first two books. Cause there's one other prequel book before you get to like the main story. So I think I might watch the Netflix series to kind of help me bridge that and get excited about a more macro plot because right now I'm not that invested in a macro plot. I just enjoyed my time with Geralt and you know his like witchy goddess worshiping friends. Like I, I'm just yeah I was into this. I really liked it. Kind of thought I would but definitely did. So this was between a 4.5 a 4 and a 4.5 and I landed on a 4 and then Network Effect by Martha Wells was between a 4 and a 4.5 and I went with a 4.5 and that's just because this made me laugh. This made me smile. Murderbot just warms my icy little heart like no other character. This book just makes me, it made me laugh out loud at so many points. And I think what's really fun about this book is that Murderbot, so like the setup is that Murderbot is on a mission with Dr. Mensa's daughter. Like they are specifically there to try to protect the daughter um, and to be on this mission. And so the daughter is a teenager and this just brings out a wonderful side of Murderbot. <laughs> <laughs> who's so over teenage bullshit. It's very funny. And like they form a very tender bond. Also art comes back and has a huge role in this. So that's really exciting to see. 
This is my second favorite book in the whole series. So I, st I mean, I'm not sure anything could ever top All Systems Red. It's such a perfect novella, but this is right behind it for me. Um, I like this even better than Artificial Condition, which had been my second favorite. So this, I just, I think that there are some pacing issues in this just because it is a full novel and I don't know, I just don't know that there, I don't even know how to put voice to this. Basically it just felt, this felt to me like it should have been two novellas, but it's one novel. Like I just kind of feel like they got put together. I don't know. So um, that's really my only critique, but I had such a wonderful time with this. I believe this comes out in May. If you love Murderbot, I do not think you're going to be disappointed. Get excited. This is just real, real good. So I, this like was my like little high, like high spot of the month. I read this after the tornadoes hit. This was like making me laugh and putting me in a much better mood. So that was wonderful. This was just a nice little bright spot in the, in the month of May. So this was definitely my biggest hit for the month. Overall, like I said, though, my, what I did read, I was liking really well. So quality, high quantity, not as high. We'll see if I can get back into a reading rhythm. For some reason, like being home so much has like made it harder for me to read. I think also because I have like the kitties to take care of and I'm still recovering. So I don't know, I'm having a harder time getting back into like a reading mood. But like I said, I think I need to read a couple of like lighter contemporaries and that might kind of help spark the spark the fire and go from there. So anyway, that was my reading month in March. Oh, and I should mention, people have been asking for a picture of my kitties, so I will put up a picture of my kitties here. Uh, so my cats are a brother and a sister, and I decided to name them after Agatha Christie characters. So the little boy's name is Captain Hastings, and the little girl's name is Miss Jane Marple. Uh, I picked these, I just felt like Poirot was too much of a name for a cat, um, so I went with Hastings. But actually, it's worked out well because Hastings is kind of like... He just like goes all in for things. Like he's very curious and like puts his full heart into things, um, sometimes somewhat foolhardily. Whereas uh, Miss Marple uh, is very, very cautious. She's very skittish and she only moves when certain. So it turned out to be a pretty good name. So for short, I call them Hastings and Marple. So yeah, those are my kitty cats. And yeah, you guys can let me know how your reading month went. Uh, let me know how you're doing with the pandemic of it all. Are you like me and kind of struggling to read or are you like getting in the zone and reading a lot? Let me know what you guys are up to, what you think uh, in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you're so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that, that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.